But things that he said today were not fact-checked. If they were fact-checked, he would have known that JJ did not beat up any police officer. He would have known that the person that beat up a police officer was sentenced to three years and served their three years. He would have known that uh, that matter was concluded and there's no need to issue a fresh instruction. It's uh, typical of this government, especially over JJ. That is why we must all be alert as to what exactly happens to JJ. JJ is still admitted in hospital right now. What he needs is... Watch the entire video, my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Why doesn't he tell us how JJ was abducted? JJ's vehicle was found at a place uh, where, which ordinarily would consider a crime scene. What we had expected is that the police would get to that scene without moving the vehicle, conduct forensics that they ought to conduct at the scene of the accident. But they didn't do that. The first thing they did, they moved the vehicle from the scene and took it to the police. Then at the police, that is where they dusted the, the vehicle for fingerprints and everything else. And they thought Zambians were so gullible to think that JJ could have committed suicide to tell us that, no, there was a suicide note in the, in the, in the vehicle. Therefore, this person could have uh, committed suicide. How do you write a note, a suicide note, and smash your own screen? It defies all logic. And the reason uh, the, 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 the case of JJ is very curious is the manner in which the police have behaved as regards that incident. It may lead anyone to suspect that there is involvement of the state, hence the noise and the comments that followed after that. Even now, the matter is not being taken seriously. We expected the president to comment over it and give the country direction, give the country some hope to say we are investigating this matter. We want to know what exactly happened to JJ. What does he do? Instead, he's talking about JJ. He's talking about, no, I want that case reopened. How does someone go to the, to, to, to the police and beat up the police officers? I expect that since he is president, he will have all the facts correct. To start with, mm. even the issue of the police uh, or the incident that happened at Central Police, yeah. he keeps saying it's JJ. But it's, it's, that's not the case. The matter went to court. Mm. When that incident happened, the matter went to court. The person who beat up uh, the, pol uh, the police officer admitted he pleaded guilty in court and was sentenced to three years. He served that sentence. JJ appeared in court, not because he beat up a police officer, but because he was amongst those youths that had gone to the police. And he was fined. He was found guilty and fined. Uh, out of uh, uh, from from exactly what had happened at that time. So that itself is a closed case. It's not a case that you can say you do this. And that is the problem that we have with this president. He has a tendency of issuing instructions of what should happen to suspects. Now, when you do that, you take away the independence of the police. The police won't act independently. So you will see that the police are going to move and possibly effect an arrest without telling the president, that is if he's ignorant of the fact that that matter is already done and dusted in the courts of law. It was in the high court. Are you telling me, counsel, as you proceed on the yes. story of mm -hmm. JJ Banda, are you telling me and the people of Zambia that the head of state is not preview to, with, to all the information that you are sharing this evening that that matter was dealt with extensively by the courts of law and it's done and dusted. It's two he has things. the um, Attorney General. You it's, mean he doesn't receive information? It's two, th it's mm. two things. Mm. It's either he's aware and he has chosen to ignore 
that for purposes of speaking his mind. Because you notice if every time the president speaks, he speaks as though he's lecturing. Okay? And everybody should listen. I'm talking here, everybody listen to me. This is what I have to say. And it's, that, it's for that reason that I'm saying that everything that he says should be scripted. It should be scripted because the ones that are going to script what he's going to say are going to fact check everything that he's going to say. But things that he said today were not fact checked. If they were fact checked, he would have known that JJ did not beat up any police officer. He would have known that the person that beat up a police officer was sentenced to three years and served their three years. He would have known that uh, that matter was concluded and there's no need to issue a fresh instruction. It's uh, typical of this government, especially over JJ. That is why we must all be alert as to what exactly happens to JJ. JJ is still admitted in hospital right now. What he needs is the support of government, an assurance, not that window dressing which Kawana did, to say, oh, we are here and he's there with his three wives. It doesn't matter how many wives he has. But the issue is this is a person who is not um, okay. This is a person who is uh, being attended to medically, from, resulting from an action of persons that have since come to be known. Because JJ himself has said, these are the people that are responsible. And those people that he has mentioned are close to the president. Perhaps that's why the president has chosen to rubbish everything. And there's an attempt right now, if you notice, slowly to paint JJ black so that they can do whatever they want to do. I say this because both incidences, the one that was referred to by Rufuma, where he says, well, the investigations that the police are conducting in a matter that happened in 2016. How do you bring a person who was abducted and has been found? You take him in for questioning. You ask him about the abduction. He tells you the things about the abduction. Then you start inquiring about an issue in to of 2016. And if they were diligent enough, they would have known that that issue of 2016 was also an issue that went to court. JJ was found guilty. And a, 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 a penalty was imposed on him. So he can't be tried twice for the same offense. It's like I'll come today and say, okay, you have uh, stolen this jacket. Therefore, let's go to court for theft. So we go to court for theft. You are found guilty. You saved your, you saved your one year. Then afterwards, you say, ah, actually, it was aggravated robbery. You used force when you were stealing that jacket. So we're taking you back for aggravated robbery. It defies all logic. And you expect that the entire system of government should be working as one and knowing what exactly should happen. But, but in this particular case, they are busy trying to paint J.J. Black so that when he comes out and says what he has to say, he's, he is not believable. But Zambians are not gullible. And Zambians know what exactly is going on. Let JJ have his day to explain to all of us who are curious about what's happening. Laura Mitty speculated and said it was a PF agenda. It was choreographed by PF. And people are curious. They're saying, there's this story. This person says he was abducted. And he has identified the people who have abducted. There's this one who, prior to the event, was saying that uh, it, it was choreographed. And then we have uh, the whole Minister of Home Affairs saying he, has, he had no physical injuries. Then we have the, superte uh, the superintendent for, for Minasoko saying he was bruised. He had bruises on his back. And uh, if those were noticeable, and uh, obviously uh, the, fa the very fact that he's being taken care of in hospital shows that there is something wrong with this person. Otherwise, the doctor do, uh, doctors would have told us there is nothing wrong with him. But there is this urgency on the part of UPND and government to want to justify uh, or at least to clean face by demeaning what happened to JJ, a member of parliament for that matter. You don't abduct a member of parliament and ignore it. If at all, there was one thing that the president ought to have addressed. That was the only thing that he should have addressed. Because that is the thing that has been pending this whole time. But instead, he window dresses everything, uh, talking about uh, the five-year issue. No, you'll be tried in five years. 
all that is targeted at one person. How can the issue of JJ Banda mm. be handled at this particular point? Because you are aware, Council, that um, it's a complicated, seemingly, matter where we hear Honorable J. Banda named some senior state house officials in the name of uh, Honorable Levingoma. Also, Clayson Hamasak has been named in that uh, saga. We bring in also Trevor Mwinde. Uh, of course, we'll have a video later on as the program progresses. These individuals were named, according to uh, his lawyer. Yes. A day later, the accused, uh, you know, the, the named individuals, they also proceed going to the police to report um, another person in the name of Jay Banda for defamation. So the question is, how this, how will this matter, or how should this matter be handled? And, and that's, that's, that's a very curious issue that I'm looking forward to. Hmm. I want to see what the police will move on first. Because the police have been told, yeah. they've asked questions as regards the abduction, and they have been told mm. that this is the information. Now, the persons that have been named are obviously supposed to be suspects in this particular case. Mm. And they ought to be treated as suspects. Now, these suspects have gone to report to the very police to say, we are reporting for uh, these people for defamation. Mm. We've been defamed. This is criminal libel. Now, the police will have to decide. If they are going to pursue the libel issue, they should only do so after concluding the investigations on the other side. That's as regards their, their abduction. Mm. Because that is the issue that has come in. And this person says, these are the people. It means that they become subject of investigation. And if they are subject of investigation, I wouldn't be surprised uh, as to the urgency with which they went and said, no, this is libel. But the issue is, have the police interviewed them? Have the police taken statements from them? Have the police found out where they were on that particular night? Have the police found out uh, where exactly Trevor Mwende was on that particular night? The night JJ went missing and the night uh, JJ was found. Where were these people who were named in this particular case? That is the job of the police, which they ought to to, to carry out and inform the nation at every stage because the reason there seemed to be so much tension is because the police were not providing any answers. Now the president is providing answers over an incident of yesterday, but he's not providing any clue or answer as regards what happened to Honorable JJ. He's not. So all that is giving us uh, an idea that the president is simply not ready, not ready to appreciate the rule of law, which he talks about. He pays lip service to the rule of law, but then puts a blind eye to it. He talks about it the most, and it's implemented the least in his governance so far. By the way, we only remain with one year and 11 months before dissolution of parliament. And a lot of things are only getting worse. What we expected of him is to be able to address the very important issues. Mm. More news to come, my lovely viewers. Make sure you subscribe to this channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below. And also turn on the bell icon to join the notification squad. For now, I'm out. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.